comprised of all beautiful creatures There stands a silver white steed on a hill Proud and alone with the moon there to guide him Unicorn talisman of goodwill Hunter from Scotland, Philip was his name. Years he traveled the world in vain in search of the single twisted horn, crowning the head of the unicorn. Oh, a picture of beauty and virtue, whispering tales of the sun and the moon. Rarest, most prized of all beautiful creatures, there stands a silver white steed on a hill, proud and alone with the moon. From almost the beginning of time, dragons have stalked the earth. They were great lumbering brutes, covered with thick, shiny scales, carrying their massive bodies on legs like tree trunks, and often with the ability to breathe smoke and flame from their ugly nostrils. Some even had wings, which carried them over castle and cottage, where baron and peasant alike cowered beneath the shadow of their passing. One such hideous beast even threatened a small English village, for the people had received the news that a dragon was smashing its way towards their peaceful dwellings. They knew that the only way to satisfy the beast and make it leave them in peace was to sacrifice a beautiful young maiden. <laughs> Rain. 
burning pastor There's a burning deep inside Can't control this feeling No matter how I try A full moon is arising In the black barbarian sky My hands and face are growing Long ago and far away, country folk would whisper of a strange creature they called the salamander. It was, so they said, a lizard-like animal. But unlike that more familiar creature, came from a world of heat and fire. Even to look at it brought some great personal tragedy into the viewer's life. 
Yet no living person had ever seen such a creature, fortunately for them. None, that is, until one never-to-be-forgotten night when a lonely elderly peasant was seated alone in his house, occasionally stirring a large cauldron of appetizing broth which was simmering over his open fire. He was so occupied with this task that he hardly noticed a small lizard-like creature skitter across the floor. In an ice-bound, fog-shrouded corner of the ancient world, where the north wind always blew, lived three terrible sisters. They were known as the Gorgons. Two of them had strange, distorted bodies that made them seem more beast than human. The third had female form. Her name was Medusa. Of the three, Medusa was by far the most evil and the most dangerous. In place of hair, 
Her head was covered with snakes, which writhed and spat venom in a most terrifying way. But worst of all were her eyes, for whoever looked at them was changed into solid stone. For many years Medusa had sat with her two sisters, and the whole area around them was littered with rain-washed, decaying stone statues that had once been living men and animals, who for one brief moment before they died had dared to look into her hideous eyes. <laughs>
In the golden days of ancient Greece, there lived a strange race of creatures known as centaurs. From a distance, they looked and sounded like horses. But the people of the hill country of northern Greece knew them for what they were, half man, half horse. Their bodies were that of a horse, sleek, strong and magnificent. But where the neck should have begun was a man's trunk, arms and head. The Greeks were happy when they heard the sound of the galloping of the centaurs, for they brought with them the laughter of the innocent and the craft of the storyteller, for they often accompanied their stories on harps. Most respected of all of the centaurs was Chiron, their leader. He was the sweetest singer of songs and a wonderful teller of stories. Everybody listened to the stories that he told Filled with the knowledge of a thousand men Even though he led the world, people called him friend Chiron, Chiron, play your harp and sing Chiron, Chiron
the people of Thebes in ancient Egypt were terribly frightened, for a strange and hideous creature had come to live near the outskirts of their city. It had already caused the deaths of a number of men travelling to and from Thebes. There were many rumours as to the cause of their deaths, but only one thing was certain. No witnesses had lived to relate what had happened. What the Thebans did not know was that their unwelcome visitor was a sphinx, a creature with the face of a woman, the feet and tail of a lion, and the wings of a great eagle. Then a merchant, passing by the creature's lair, had actually managed to see it. His story was that he had hidden, terror-stricken, when the sphinx suddenly emerged from its cave to demand of his companion the answer to an unanswerable riddle. It was, What goes on four legs, then two legs, then three? Answer me quickly, or dead you will be. <laughs>
By far the strangest and most beautiful bird the world has ever seen was the fabulous bird known as the phoenix, sacred to the sun. It was a large bird and with the most gorgeous rainbow-colored plumage imaginable and with a delightful singing voice. Yet for all its beauty and its long life, for it was said to live for a hundred years and more, it was an extremely shy bird and one seldom seen by human eyes. Yet many had tried to find the phoenix, for it had been foretold that all who saw it would be blessed with every fine quality possible, and in consequence, men journeyed throughout the domains where the bird was said to live, to Persia, Arabia, and Egypt, but rarely with any success. Some thought they had seen the flash of its bright wings in out-of-the-way places, yet when they drew nearer, their hearts almost bursting with excitement, they soon realized that what they had seen was but the flash of light on some metallic rock or the glint of sunshine on a secluded desert pool. This bird is sacred to the sun It's been around since time began gold and scarlet hue, feathers green and tail of blue. It brings good fortune, happiness, and with it also signs of peace. A happy man he is who sees the phoenix flying by with ease. Gazing at the burning Persian sun, it's death and birth are all in one. Burns with more than hope. 